Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. Hallelujah. Welcome to the School of yeah. Intercession Prayer Talk Show. I am your prayer host, Sister Rashida Davis, Hallelujah. and I have my co-host with me today, my husband, Terrence Davis. Today, we have a powerful topic for those who are married. Yeah. And this talk show is really to encourage us to help us in our marriage yeah. go to the next level. Yeah. So our talk show topic is 911 yes. marriage counseling yeah. with Terrence and Rashida. Yes. So we're this um, particular talk show is catered for those who are who are in the Lord and they want their marriages to represent our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we're going to give y'all the opportunity right now to share this broadcast, to share this talk show. I want you all to share it with those in the body of Christ, even those that are not married and desire to be married. We want to share some wisdom from the Word of God and even from our experience of being married. So I'm going to give y'all that opportunity to share um, this prayer um, talk show today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Yes. Yes. Glory be unto God. So guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. Welcome to the prayer talk show. Um, this um, talk show is such a blessing Amen. to my husband and I because we truly believe, Terrence and I, we truly believe that marriage is yes. your first ministry. Hallelujah. We truly believe that marriage is our first ministry yes. and we have taken a lot of time in our um, years with the Lord for him to train us um, in marriage according to the word of God as he continues is going to train us. Yes. Um, first, we're going to just say a prayer over um, the married couples yes. that are watching and those that desire to be married. We're just going to loose the blood of Jesus. And we just pray that this talk show today will be a blessing to you. So, yes. Father God, in the name yes. of Jesus, God, we just thank you and honor you yes. on today. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, that when you created us, you were mindful of us. Father, you said to, oh God, Father God, it's not good for man to be alone. So, Father, you desire to make Adam a helper, oh God, in the earth realm. Father, to fulfill the will of the Father which is in heaven. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God, for creating, oh God, Adam, oh God, and creating Eve, oh God, for the purpose of the Lord. So, Father, we just pray now in the name of Jesus. Father God, that this talk show, Father, will be a blessing to your people. We pray now that the Holy Spirit will cancel us, oh God, and help our marriages, oh God, to be all, Father, that you desire it to be. Father, we pray today that only you alone will get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, God, how you're going to minister, Father God, to us and through us, oh God. Father, we just loose the blood of Jesus over the airways. We loose the blood of Jesus over every marriage. We loose the blood of Jesus, God, over every woman, our man of God, that desire, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, to marry or to do, God, the marriage, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus again, that may have divorce, oh God. So, Father, we just pray now in the name of Jesus, God, Father God, that you alone will get the glory and that this talk show, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, will bless us, your kingdom yes, people. Father. In Jesus' name we Jesus. pray. Amen and amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory be unto God. Yes. Yes. So, sweetie, I'm very, very excited that the Lord put this on our heart, Amen. that we can share with the audience some of our experience. Can you tell everyone um, how long we've been married? Oh, well, praise the Lord, saints. We just thank God for being here on today. Amen. Uh, well, me and my wife, we've been married for 19 years. Hallelujah. 19 years of marriage. Amen. We met in 2001. I'm sorry, we got married in 2001. We met in 99 and we uh, got engaged in 2000. And we had, uh, you know, I just like to be transparent. We had a child out of wedlock, uh, Rashad. Uh, me and my wife both brought one to the table, a child to the table. Uh, you know, before we got married, uh, I myself had Terrence Jr. And she had Jacarius. 
uh, Maurice Love, whom just graduated on yesterday. Praise the Lord. We thank God for our graduate. Amen. Amen. And then we have Rashad, um, like I say, before marriage. Uh, and then we end up getting engaged. Uh, and then we wedded. We married in 2001 of June, June 25th, 2001. Amen. So it's been 19 whole years uh, of marriage. And we bless God for it. You know, it's been some ups and downs and in between. But through it all, God has kept us. Amen. And I just thank God for it. 19 years with this beautiful, powerful woman of God. Woo, woo. 19 years. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you get a kiss for that. You get a kiss for that. <laughs> but yes, Amen. as a matter of God said, um, we've been together, been married for 19 years. When we first met, we both was not saved. We met in college. We actually met in college, and we met at a nightclub. Amen. Amen. So we met in a nightclub, Amen. and this was a particular night that I didn't want to go out with my girlfriend and my sister and my husband-to-be that I didn't know at the time. He didn't want to go to the club. Amen. But some kind of way, um, their, our friends pulled us together, and we ended up going to the club. I don't know how far Shaw, Mississippi is from Greenwood. Oh, uh, I don't really know either, but I don't uh, remember. yeah, I can't remember. But I, yeah, it's, it's it's maybe about I would say maybe thirty minutes, forty five minutes, something like that. Maybe a little bit longer uh, from Greenwood, but that that was the particular club that we went to. So we drove, right. um, we drove to a club in Shaw, Mississippi, and um, uh, my husband to be was in the club. So when um, we actually met we met actually in a club we actually met in a club and he um he inquired of me through my friend he asked amen. my friend um concerning me i guess i'll let him tell that amen oh she want me to tell it amen mm -hmm. I, you know I, we just like to be transparent and we just tell it amen uh but 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 and first of all we're not condoning uh you know clubbing we just tell you what happened to us yes. we just 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 being transparent what happened to us but when, when, like my wife said, we went, we wasn't saved at the time. But when I went in the club with my friend at the time, uh, a young man at the time from Greenville, and I'm originally from Greenville, Mississippi. Uh, but he wanted to go out that night. I didn't want to go. I wanted to stay at home. Just, just wanted to stay at home. But anyway, with that said, uh, as I went into the the club, I saw this beautiful young lady, and I laid eyes on her. But at the minute, the moment I saw her. I knew, I told my friend, I said, this is the one right here. Now, I can't explain it, but I'm reminded of the word of God. I said, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing to attain favor. Ha, <laughs> under she attained favor from the Lord. So immediately, and like I said, I can't explain it, just going on what I can share with you. I knew that this was my wife. And I went and uh, some young man was trying to talk to her at the time, but I stayed persistent, and so I went on and I shared uh, with her friend and asked, inquired about her and everything. So, with that said, um, we ended up talking uh, later on that night, um, and then we ended up talking even more later on that night once we got to our separate places because she stayed in Greenwood and I stayed in Greenville, and so I stopped by and over my friend's house and called her. And everything, and uh, we stayed on the phone uh, to the wee wee hours of the morning. Matter of fact, daylight had came, uh, and we still was on the phone talking and everything of that sort. But um, you know, we just bless God for our union and putting us together. He put two unsaved people together, and we both married, and then we came to know Yeshua as our personal Lord and Savior. And I just bless God for allowing us to come into the fold. And he has no respect for person. Just as he have done it for our marriage and for us, our union, he can do it for anyone else union. And I'm talking about husband and wife, not two women hooking up or two men hooking up. Let's make that clear. And I know <laughs> we have saints, saints of God on the other end, but it may be somebody watching that you know, is in that lifestyle, but, you know, uh, just had to share that, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Um, like the man of God just mentioned um, about how our meeting up, we both wasn't saved at the time. Does that take us to our very first question that uh, the man of God wants to talk about? Um, 
Today is about 911 marriage counseling. And we want to be as transparent as possible to really um, help God's people. And we are the first to say our marriage is not perfect. We have been tested through the fire. Our love has been tested. Our love has been tested um, from better, for worse, from rich, from poor. Our marriage has been tested. Our love has been tested to see Amen. if we genuinely, genuinely love one another um, as Christ wanted us to love one another. Amen. Like we said, we both was not saved because I do believe that when God bring a person together, if you already say, um, why marry a unbeliever? That's right. Why marry an unbeliever? That's You're right. unequally yoked. That's right. But in our case, we was we both did not have a relationship right. with the Lord. Amen. And but the Lord, that same year we got married in 2001, mm -hmm. we both got saved that same year. Amen. We got saved in late November, Amen. is what I remember. Amen. Of 2001. Yes. I got saved that Thursday night, and my husband got saved that Sunday. Amen. That Sunday. So we got saved the same year, and from there. The Lord began to um, work on us. Um, he began to shape us according to his word. To live a godly marriage that represent him and his kingdom. And that represented his love. So our very first question, man of God. We want to uh, uh, bring counseling to you guys. The very first question that we want to um, impart some knowledge and some truth to um, God's people. Um, the question is, man of God, I'm going to ask my husband to, to enlighten us on this. How, uh, what do you do if you are already married? What do you do when you are already married and you find yourself unequally yoked? So this question is for, let's use an example. My husband and I were already married and in our testimony, we already married and we both was not saved. So all of a sudden, I get saved in 2001 and my husband has not gotten, is, has not accepted Christ yet. But when we initially got together, both of us was unsaved. Now the wife or the man is now saved and do I leave the marriage because now I'm saved and my spouse is not saved? No, you don't. According to the word, we're going to take you to scripture. We're going to use a scripture to explain that, um, how God viewed that. Because initially, both of you all was uh, didn't have a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. So he's Amen. going to expound on that. Um, if you're already in a marriage. And now one, the husband is a man of God and the wife, she has not given her self to the Lord. Now all of a sudden, she's not saved. I just want to get rid of her. And he has no other reason why she hasn't cheated on him. There's no adultery. And he just wants to, I'm just tired. I'm just, I just, I want me a saved wife. You're going to have to pray. You're going to have to birth that woman. Uh, and, and, and to um, salvation, you got to do your job. But I'm going to let him expound on that. And we're going, to, we're going to pray that this wisdom would help um, help God's people. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, first of all, you may, you may be in a situation or a person who may be listening, maybe in a situation like my wife said, maybe in a situation where um, both of you all, um, your, your faith wasn't that strong uh, from the start. Or, or when you all got married, or you may have grown, you may have grown to, I would say you may have grown since, or both, or maybe both were strong, and he or she may have fell from the faith. So what do you do in, in a situation like that? Well, first, let's, let, let, let's go to the Word of God. Um, the Word of God in, in first. Corinthians 7 and 12. But to the real, the rest, I'm sorry, to the rest, speak I, not the Lord. If any brother 
had a wife that had believed not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which had an husband that believed not, and it he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God have called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save the, thy husband, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save their wife? Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Well, first of all, even in this situation, you may, you may be listening, and it may be a man of God who is, is, and gave his life to the Lord now, and, have, and his wife had it. You all wasn't saved at the time when you got, you know, came, you, you joined, you had union, uh, and got married, as me and my wife were, we, we, which we just mentioned. We both wasn't saved when we gave, I mean, when we came, uh, got married, but we both gave our life to the Lord. But this, this may be a man that may be listening. And he done gave his life unto the Lord since marriage, but his wife have not. The word of God said that if that wife, if your spouse, man of God, is willing to stay with you, don't depart from her. And vice versa. If a, a, a saved, born again, a uh, believing spouse, wife, you may be to give your life to the Lord and your husband uh, may not. Or say, for instance, if both of y'all gave your life to the Lord, but now he done fell away or done fell from the faith. He need that strong woman of God. And he want to stay with you. He need that strong woman of God to get in her prayer closet and vice versa. That unsaving wife need that strong man of God to get in their prayer closet and pray and pray and pray that spouse through and pray that spouse through that that, that spouse can become a born again believer and that he will pass or she will pass from death unto life. That's very important. That it is said that a sanctified husband can save his wife and vice versa. A sanctified wife can save her husband. And with that said, they can see the godly principles, the godly attributes in you and want to be won over. They will be won over by your character on how you treat them, how you love them, how you, you, you present yourself to them. That's powerful and that, that's very important. Uh, in a marriage, in a marriage, it's very, very important. We know some situations where um, a saved wife was saved, and husband out there, you know, on, on drugs and different things of that sort. And, you know, people will say this, people say that you need to leave in different things of that sort, but God have not gave and given that, that, that person a release. And that person got in their prayer closet and prayed their husband through and their husband came and, and became born again. I see, just imagine if she had a left, you know, uh, 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 and he wanted to stay, but she wanted to leave, but he wanted to stay with her and she wanted to leave. Just look at the situation. She prayed for him and interceded for him and he came to know the Lord. And vice versa, it can be the same way with that man of God, praying your spouse, your wife through that she may come to know Yeshua and the pardon of her sin. That's, that's, that's very important. That's very important. But quickly, I'm going to give you six six points, if, if I will. Well, first I'm going to ask if my wife want to interject something. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, she says she don't want to interject something. Well, uh, first of all, I'm going to give you six points that will help you if you find yourself unequally yoked 
And see, let me go back to this because you can come, and that's also too with two people that are actually born again, or, or you all come into a marriage and uh, you're not saved, then you give your life to the Lord. That husband don't really need to run off, and if that wife is willing to stay, and, and if you all are born again, that husband don't really need to run off and leave that wife behind spiritually. He need to be imparting in her, uh, 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 you know, things of the spirit and, and, and different things of that sort, and, and maybe books he read or, or knowledge or whatnot he read, or uh, uh, sharing it even with his wife, you know, uh, and, and different things of that sort. So that's very important as, as well because you know you need to grow together and be as one, and that's very important uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a marriage. I want to uh -huh. say something right there. Um... If you already in a marriage and both of you say one, one individual is spiritually growing more than the other, I'm going to use, as he said, as a husband, it will be wise if, if you, man of God, will also want your wife to grow with you in part, um, share, share things, study the word of God together. But one thing I do know, you can make. Exactly. That woman pick up that book and vice versa, vice versa for a woman of God. She want her husband to grow. She want him to, she has a strong prayer life, study life. Only thing she can do her part, she can share yes, yes. what the Lord has given her. But I want you also to be careful that you do not try to force it. That's not love. You can be praying in the background and you can be praying, okay, God, um, please touch his heart. I'm going to ask him, can we do Bible study together? Because the key thing is, I want to grow together. I want us to grow in wisdom together. I want us to do scriptures of my finances together. I don't want to have all of this revelation and he's lacking because, let me tell you this, because in marriage, there is no competition. That's right. That's There's right. absolutely no competitiveness, no competition. If I got a strong prayer life, I want my husband to have a strong yes. prayer life. If I'm strong in the word, I want him to be strong in the word. If he's strong in the word, but I know that God has gifted us all differently. And I respect whatever mantle on his life. I respect uh, the authority that he's, that he's carrying that... He may be, I can humbly say, his level of prayer could be greater than mine. Now, I'm not going to compete right. with that level of prayer that's on his life. My level of teaching out of prophetic may be stronger than his. He shouldn't compete with that that's with it. me. Because I'm going to tell you one thing. You cannot compete with God. That's right. Every that's gift, right. every that's good right. gift comes from the Lord. Right. Your purpose of coming together is so we can grow together. So I just wanted to say something right there because I don't want somebody to say, well, see, you need to be studying with me. And you need, I don't want it to come it. out it. in a very um, controlling way. Don't force anything. Don't Amen. force anything. Be that example. Be yes. Christ-like. Yes. Be that example and give that person grace. Give that person time yes. to be willing yes. to come together Amen. once a week, twice yes. a week, whatever the yes. Holy Spirit put on your heart. Yes. So I wanted to share that wisdom in that. So as we are growing, I want our family to grow together. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to share that part of um, people being already saved. You're already saved. So when, because one, one scripture says in, in 1 Corinthians 7 and 20, each one should remain in the, in the situation right. which he was in when God called him. Yes. So if God called me when I was married, I'm, keep in mind, I'm already saved. 
And um, he called me in a, in a case where we was married and we were both unsaved. We both unsaved. And all of a sudden, God called me into his kingdom. Hallelujah. I get saved. This is what the scripture saying. He said, you shall remain. Don't leave out. That's right. Because when I called you, Ashita, both of you guys were unsaved. This is not saying someone, you are, you single. You are already a believer. You in the word of God. The word tells you this is this is an, it's, it's so powerful that God can speak to each Hallelujah. group of people yeah. in every different type of situation. Yeah. And some people will take one scripture and relate it to a whole group of people. That's yeah. not necessarily true in every case. That's right. So if you if God called you. You were single. Now you have a relationship with the Lord. He said, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. This, you love God, and he's still serving himself and the devil. Mm -hmm. He's still serving himself and the devil, or she is. Right. So I just wanted to, to share that particular wisdom, because sometimes uh, people can um, get into, they can begin to settle. Mm -hmm. And they can begin, well, this person got potential. He doesn't love God yet, but I believe if I do this, I do that. So I just want to share that wisdom. Amen. And, and that's good. Thank you, wife, for that. Uh, and that, that's good. Um, because even, even, it, it's, and even, I would say, it's people that have got married and married have married the wrong person, you know, because, like my wife said, they don't. You know, they, they didn't wait for this or that or, or thinking that, okay, I'm going to get too old and then ain't nobody going to want me, so I'm yeah. going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go ahead settle. And, and settle and marry, marry this person, you know, and, and, and really uh, seeing, uh, you know, heartaches and different things behind that for marrying the wrong person. And, and, and really, you know, within their, within their themselves, they're knowing that this is not the right person, but they're just settling, you know. But... Um, with that said, those you 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 have to be careful with that. Those of you that may be watching that is thinking about getting married. I know we're talking to the married people, but I just wanted to throw that out there as well. Make sure you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait on whom God has for you. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that this is the person that God has for you. Amen. But um, I like what my wife shared, and uh, she she was hitting it, you know, the nail on the head, uh, because one of the points why I wanted to to share about that is if or when a person is in a relationship or in a marriage where it's unequally uh, 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 yoked, one, you need to respect his or her. Uh, decision. We can't control them, like my wife mentioned. We can't control them. We can't be the person, the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we can't. They that's their choice. If they don't, you know, want God right now, you can't make them. You can't force them. Uh, and it, prime example. And, and, and I'm sure that my wife don't mind. I don't, she don't mind me sharing this. Uh, when we like to be transparent. Me and my wife were saved in 2001. And b between those years, maybe of 2001, maybe 2003. I wanted my wife to be a certain way. But that was me. And the more I think I voiced it and and... and it was like the worst things were getting. Now, we was born again, but I had to realize, and God had to open my eyes, Terrence, you didn't make Rashid. I did. So, give her to me. Go in your prayer closet and pray. And once I did that, things got a whole lot better. And vice versa. It's times in the marriage where, you know, she done, you know, voice things at me, you know, and different things of that sort. And she had to step back. 
and pray about the situation. And saw a mighty move of God. That God had touched her husband's heart. Where it's like she couldn't get in at the time. And vice versa. I couldn't get in at the time. Because we was trying to do it our way. And not God's way. And we had to step back and go in our prayer closet. And just give one another to God. And pray about the situation. And God turned it hard and rip it cushy. God turned that thing around. Uh, in, in both of our cases, he turned it around. Because like I said, we can't control one another. And, and, and we know that, and see, this is what we have to realize. In marriages, and when we come into marriages, yes. we bring baggage. We do. We bring baggage from past relationships, uh, you know, with uh, girlfriend, boyfriend. We bring baggage. Say, for instance, and, and, and even the way that we have been brought up, we bring things that, you know, that, that is different, you know. Prime example, one may, 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 may squeeze, say, oh, it's right to squeeze the toothpaste from the top and get the toothpaste out. Then the other one may say, no, nah, you squeeze from the bottom and, and, and get the toothpaste out. You know, little, 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 little different things of that sort. Uh, but we bring baggage in from past relationships and from how we was reared up. And those things can affect a marriage as well. So we have to be wise and we have to uh, uh, go to God and have to sit down and talk even about uh, you know different issues or, or, or concerns and different things of that sort. But that was one. That's one of the points that I like to make about 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 uh, about that. Respect his or her right to decide or their decision. You know because um, you go in your prayer closet. Say for instance, that husband, that same husband. That wife may not want to follow the Lord right now. You go in your prayer closet. You don't, don't force her or different things like that, but you just do what the word says. Love your wife and Christ has loved the church. And do your part. And she will see that God fearing man and see God in you. And that can win her over. And then the Bible also said that the prayer that the prayers of the righteous avail as much. You got a right relationship with the Lord. You can pray and intercede for your spouse. And she will come, little you know, you look around, she come to know the Lord in the pardon of her sin. And that come from your intercession. Acts of obedience. Your act of obedience, like my wife mentioned. And your stand for Christ and loving God, going out to God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul, and also loving her. And she not only hear about his love, <laughs> she see it. She not only hear about God, she see it in action and in deed. And so that's, that's very important. What? Wow. What I wanted to um, share with him about that, the counseling or the wisdom that the Lord is sharing through my husband is, you know, man of God, if you find yourself in that case or a woman of God, if that's your case right now, the wisdom that the Lord is sharing with you and with us is we got to, if we want to see kingdom fruit yes, yes. in our marriages, yes. We got to follow the protocol of our king, yes. King Jesus. So one of the yes. protocols, men of God, yes. you're going to have to become a prayer warrior, yes. a prayer yes. agent yes. just for your wife. Yes. Women of God, yes. you're going to have to become that number yes. one prayer yes. warrior or agent just for your spouse. Yes. Yes. Marriage is your first ministry. That's right, so true. Um, also, as the, uh, the Lord was sharing and imparting that when we come together in a marriage, we sometimes comes with, well, not sometimes we do. We come with two different mindsets, mm -hmm. two different upbringings. That's right. Um, we can come with, in <coughs> our cases, we both wasn't saved. We came with two different Amen. issues. Amen. We didn't come from a godly, I can say for myself. I did not come from a godly background. 
I didn't. I never saw two saved people in my family um, marriage walk. Mm -hmm. So, and when we initially got together, and I did get saved. As he said that there are some things he wanted to change about me. I should be this and I should be more that. I had absolutely no clue until I got in the word of God. Felt in love. Let me tell you, one of my first things that I did with God, I felt in love with prayer. I felt in love with spending time with God. So instead of him coming to point out all my issues, and not saying that's what he was doing, but that's how I felt. Right. I felt that you pointing out all my issues, and I'm going to come back, and I'm going to point out some of your issues. And we're going to talk about that. It's going to be, too, how to deal with arguments right. and disputes. Because yes. it's yes. 911 marriage counseling. Right. We're going to talk about yes. that next. Yes. So you're trying to point out all of my stuff. Let me tell you what I don't like about you and this and this and that. Because let me tell you a part of my issue was I was so independent. I was extremely independent, and he was a man that was brought up old school. He was very old school, mm -hmm. raised by his grandparents. He believed in taking care of his wife. You ain't got to live nothing. And once we got in the word and got a more understanding, hey, wife got a purpose too. Yeah. Hey, sure. um, um, it's about Rashida, it's about allowing him to leave. It's about allowing him to leave because a man wants a wife and not a mother. That's right. Can I help? That's right. Can That's the good. Lord help us That's in good. here? Praise the Lord. That's they good. want a helper right. and not a mama. Mm -hmm. A woman wants, come on, man, yes. let me talk That's to it. you. A <laughs> woman on. On. wants a man. Yes. They don't want a daddy. Yes. We want a man. Yes. We want somebody that if the if the uh, things um get tough, this man know how to pick. Look, I'm gonna take that burden off you. You don't have to worry about it. I got this. I'm gonna take care of business. So a little lady, we're gonna get to kind of address those particular issues in the marriage and how the Lord has helped us seriously overcome in those particular cases. Dealing with different issues, what you don't like about your spouse and all of that and how to properly, effectively do it God's way and see kingdom fruit. I'm going to let the man of God go ahead and continue to expound on, on this unequally yoke. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank my wife for that. I mean, it's, it's always good to, um, you know, have, um, you know, wisdom. Uh, godly wisdom to come in and help us in our marriage and help us in our walk uh, with God and thank God for that. Amen. Um, but also too, you find yourself in a marriage that's, I would say, unequally yoked. You're unequally yoked. Um, the second point I like to point out, we have to be accountable for our own actions. Admit, and with that said, I want I want to say this. Really admitting when you're wrong. Admitting when you're wrong, accountable for your own actions. Say for instance myself, okay? I'm used for myself. I need to admit when I have wronged her and vice versa. I don't need to go around and not admit when I wrong her I need to be accountable for my action and say, look, honey, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did that. You know, you forgive me. You know, I was wrong. And vice versa. You know, that that, that helps in the marriage as well. And especially in a marriage that is unequally yoked. Because unequal <laughs> shit. Because that same person, you happen to wrong. That your, your spouse who is unsaved. He or she need to see that godly character in you. Yes, we're not perfect. None of us are. But when you wrong that person. Yeah. Make it right. So they can see the godly character in you. Because that can draw them. Help draw them unto the Lord. Because they see 
someone that's not hypocritical, but truly on fire for the Lord and a God-fearing person. And that can go a, a, a long way. So that's very, uh, that's very important. Be accountable. We have to be accountable. And notice I say we. <laughs> and I know me and her both, we are born again. But we still have to be accountable for our, you know, for our actions. You know, I don't need to uh, wrong her or say something wrong to her and, and, and not get it right with her. And then get up and, and minister the word of God, you know, and vice versa. No, you, 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 we out of order. <laughs> you know, we go in and minister to somebody else and ain't, ain't ain't made it right with our spouse. Man. You know, I mean, that's very important. So that's that's the second point that I wanted to, sh to share uh, with that that will help us uh, and will help help someone that's listening in an unequally uh, marriage, being unequally yoked in a marriage. You had anything? Okay, because um, especially what he just mentioned, um, to make sure that you go back and um, apologize and make things right. Because what it does, it draws that person yes, yes, to God. Yes, they begin yes, to see God in you. Yes, they begin to yes, see um, godly character. Yes, you will know them by their yes, fruit. That's it. And not even, I'm going to say this, not even in the case also of marriage. I remember one time I had said... Um, Something to my children, I got on them, and my tone was just completely wrong right. in the way I approached approached them. And I got a call to go do something for a neighbor. So before I did it, the Holy Spirit quickened me. He you will. need to go back and you need to apologize to your children. Yes. So before yes. I could go out and do a service unto the Lord, on, I had to serve right. that first service yes. first. Get things right at yes. home first before yes. you go out. Now, we all missed it. Yes. yes. All of yes. us, well, I can speak for me. I can raise two hands. That I have done things yes. where I didn't get it right. Yes. I went out and I still did things in the name of the Lord and came back still full of anger, still had issues in my heart with my spouse. Mm -hmm. I personally have done that, but I'm going to share with you later what that cost me. See, in marriage, the key thing about marriage is not about you anymore. Mm -hmm. It's not about the flesh anymore. It's, well, in the kingdom, it's never about the flesh. It's never about us. It is about a team. Yes, it's yes. about now I got to consider yes. somebody else. Yes. I got to consider what this yes. other person like, what this other person would like to do. Because me, I'm not a sports person, even though we got... We raised six children, five of them boys, one girl, and most of all of them but one was in sports. My husband loves sports. Come watch football with me, basketball with me. Let's go to the game. Let's go. So in a marriage, it's no longer about Rashida Davis, what I like, what I want to do. I have to consider him and his desires because now we are a team. And we got to make it, we got to make it about us now. Yes. What's to benefit us Hallelujah. and no longer about yes. that one person because that in that way your marriage can grow. That's right. It's all to be stuck on self. Imagine everything we do, every time we go out, baby, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And deep down, you want to do something right. that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. So we got to balance this out and make it fair. We got to make it fair because those are some things that that spouse, that spouse, that man of God wants to do are that woman of God. And we can't use as men, well, I'm the head. It's what I want to do. And that's why we got to get a definition according to the word of God. What is what is the head? That's right. How, what does the head look like? What does it represent? Because we could be pro programmed by the worldly system or a mindset that you was brought up to believe, which is really a lie. And that is bringing more trauma to your marriage instead of bringing healing and restoration and life. So instead of your wife or your husband growing, it's, it's constantly bringing more depression and stress because the marriage is not being lined up to the word of God 
are sometimes we, including women and men of God, can use scriptures to try to manipulate right. one another. Right. And sometimes that's done in ignorance because you know no better. Right. You haven't sat, sat time in the word to study, to get right. an accurate understanding for right. yourself. Right. You just went by what somebody told you, a word, what you heard somebody preach over the pulpit that was preaching out of their soulish realm, right. out of their hurt, yeah. out of their emotions, yes. and giving you an interpretation that does not line up with Holy Spirit, Amen. that does not completely line up with Holy Spirit. So I knew in my marriage, I wanted my marriage to bear fruit. So Amen. I got in the word myself yes. to get an understanding what submission was, what submission was not. All those scriptures, not so much relating to him, I was going to trust God to deal with Terrence. Yes. But I wanted to know what was my role as a wife. And God, I need you to give me understanding so I can learn how to implement it and walk in it. So that's what I wanted to share in that part of it. Amen. And praise the Lord. Like I say, thank God for the insight. Amen. Amen. Truly a blessing. Truly a blessing. Uh, but I'm going to move right along. I wanted, I wanted to, uh, and that's good that my wife, um, you know, said that as well, because uh, Galatians 5 and 22, you know, talks about uh, the fruits of the spirit. And going on with that said, when I was talking about uh, be accountable for our own action, see, our spouse, that unbelieving spouse, need to see in that saved, <laughs> she need to see in that saved spouse, the fruits of the spirit. You know, see that love, you know, see, you know, all of the fruits of the spirit and see the godly character in you. And that's, that's very important. But the third point I wanted to point out, um, seek to understand. I think even in, 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 in a marriage that, that's unequally yoked, I think that person needs to seek to understand that spouse that is not born again, whether it's that, that, that man or whether it's that woman. Because seeking to understand, because you need to find out what he believe, he or she believe, what they don't believe, what who they uh, believe in, and you know, all this all this makes makes I mean need to need to come, you need to sit and talk about this and discuss this. And even with discussing this, and finding out what that person believe and what he don't believe, you can take that now and you have something to go on. You can take that now and go in your prayer closet and pray even concerning that. Or, you know, as the Lord lead and if that, that, that unbelieving uh, 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 spouse uh, is open, you can share with them through the word of God, you know, concerning uh, uh, what they believe or what they don't believe in, in different things of that sort. And that's a way that can help you also in your marriage if it's unequally yoked in that matter. Amen. And, and again, guys, because those who are just tuning in, when, you're when he's talking about unequally yoked, he, this is counseling for people that when God first called yes, you, yes. you was already married. Yes. You was already ma married. Both of y'all probably was both two sinners. And then one end up getting saved. And the other person is not saved. Right. What how what does that marriage look like? Um, how does I as a saved spouse can be able to um, live a life in that marriage that please, please God. And also draw my spouse into yes. the kingdom of God. Because that's the ultimate mm -hmm. goal. One thing that he said about that that I wanted to share, he said, seek to understand that person and find out what they believe in. What the Lord was giving the man of God speaking through him, this is a strategy. This could be strategy for you yes. in prayer. Yes. This God can give you a strategy. Okay, what I'm trying to see what it is that is hindering on, my come husband on, come on. from I, saying yes to Jesus. Good. Good. That is hindering my wife from saying yes, yes to Jesus. Yes. I am trying to find yes. a strategy yes. to come against the gates of yes. hell. It's almost like doing a a um a spiritual uh, mapping in their bloodline. Amen. They probably were raised up 
The mama was Jehovah Witness and the daddy served some other religion. And this, your spouse could be really confused. So once you kind of sit and you have those uh, type of conversations, um, and, and, and keep in mind, say, you may say, well, my spouse is not going to open up to me about that. You know, I tried that. That didn't work. Don't give up on God. Go in prayer. God will open up a door where a relative in his family that is saved going to sit down and tell you everything. Hey, this is what's going on. This is why your husband function the way he does. Your wife, this is why she think the way she does. And that will be information that God has opened up the door for you to propel against the gates of hell that this thing can break. And also, man of God says, seek to understand, which we're going to talk about um, a little bit when we get into different arguments. So Amen. those could be ways that you could use that to come against the, the um, kingdom of darkness. Remember, we're not fighting each other. Right. The fighting against flesh and blood, it's against these powers that yes. stand in the yes. way yes. of their wife saying, Lord, I will obey because the purpose, I believe, the true purpose of marriage, people think worldly, is just so I could stop sinning, fornicating, um, having sex outside of marriage. Let's just go and get married so that can look right in the eyesight of the Lord. The true purpose of marriage, in my opinion, is so two people that God bring together, that oh, no man could separate yes. is for the purpose yes. of doing kingdom work. Yes. It's for a greater oh, purpose. That's it. that's it's that's for it. the kingdom. Yes. That when God purposely put me in my mother's womb in 1978, he purposely put Terrence Davis Sr. in his mother's womb in 1975, God had a purpose in those three years span for us to meet yes. in 19, was it 99? 99. In 1999. It was all a set of yes. purpose yes. so we could be sitting here with you today Hallelujah. to do the work of Come the on. Lord. That's it. It's to do yes. his work. Yes. It's to do his business. But even in that, he is still perfecting us in yes. Christ because we still have not arrived. We still don't have everything together about marriage. We still don't have everything together about family. We still don't have everything together. He's still perfecting yes. us. Yes. So we understand our purpose of becoming one is for Jesus Christ. So Hallelujah. we have to Amen. make sure, Amen. even when we get into these different arguments, which, which we're going to talk about, he hit a key point. Seek to understand. That's it. Wait a minute. That's it. Where this coming from? That's it. Devil, you about to right. you're you're about to back all the way up because the Holy Ghost is about to arrest you. Hallelujah. You yes. don't know who you are yes. messing with. I am a child of the kingdom, yes. and this is a kingdom assignment. We have been ordained Hallelujah. to do what we do. Yes. So when you began to get that particular mindset and know what power is trying to come up against yes. the work and the name of the Lord, and you got information from God, and the Lord would begin to give you tactics and how to go against him, yes. Yes. guess what? <laughs> he got no other choice but to back up. Resist that yes. devil. And yes. he will flee. Amen. So I just wanted to Amen. touch bases on that yes. because I think that is so key that we know yes. the purpose why we together. Yes. That's right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And, and just going on um, um, as we go on and talk about, um, you know, being unequally yoked in uh, marriages. In marriages. Also, it's good to focus on the positive and not the negatives. I need to say that again. It's good to focus on the positive and not the negatives. And that's even in marriage that's not equally, uh, 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 that's, that's not unequally yoked. Focus on the positive and not the negatives. You know, a lot of times, and, and, and we, we have to be careful with this. Mm -hmm. We'll look over and we'll see how 
this marriage is going. And we'll want, we, we have to be careful with it, or we'll want our marriage to go, you know, as this marriage is. Because they, they may be doing it this way, uh, 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 her husband may be doing this this way, his wife may be doing this way. We can't look at that. Mm -hmm. Focus on the positive of what your spouse is doing. <laughs> Yes, on God. what your spouse is doing yes. and not on the negative what your spouse may be doing. Focus on the positive. Focus on the good thing that she or he is doing and not the negative. Build that person up, your spouse up. Say nice things to that, to, to, to that spouse and not focus on the negative part. Oh, well, you, you need... And, 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 and hear me. Man, woman of God, you need to give your life to the Lord. Yes, that may be true. And that is true. He need to give us, he or she need to give our life to the Lord. But if you say it, if you saying it in the wrong spirit, in the wrong attitude, is that right? No. That person, that unbelieving spouse, won't, won't receive it. You have to be done in love and, and you know, genuine love. You know, we can't. Force it on them, if, you know, a different thing of that sort. We have to uh, just display godly character before them. Amen. Can I jump in? Yeah, jump in. <laughs> I want to jump in right there. We, we as people, God created us mm -hmm. to, it, it's in us where we want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Guys, we... And, and a lot of times people go out here and they go looking for love. We want to be loved. And Terrence can tell me all day, I love you, I love you, I love you. And he do. But I want him to show me. That's right. So we can, and he does. I want him to show me that you love me. Right. If you love me, you would not do this or you would not do that. You would spend time with me. Right. So... Women of God and men of God, you have a spouse that is not saved, and you all are already married. The number one to God is love. You're going to draw that person in with God's love. And I know you may say, well, that's easier said than done. You don't know how this man talked to me. You don't know how this woman treat me. She treat the people in the church better than she treat me. Um... Uh, she's supposed to be a woman of God. She's so hypocritical. Well, I'm going to say this to you, woman or man of God. If you're in that case, you are falling not in the word of God. So you have to take that to the Lord and, and make some changes. That your spouse is not seeing godly love. They're not seeing the fruit of the scriptures. That you will preach it, but you won't live it. Come on, come on. Oh. Uh, also, the man talked to me in a kind of way. I cook for him. I clean for him. I do all the things for the children. I mean, he act like I don't even exist. He never shows me. He loved me. Rashida and Terrence, what do I do? What do I do in that case where I really feel I'm doing all that God has called and told me to do? And this man of God is just still stuck. It's been 15 years. And he's seen still in that situation. Man of God, how can we minister to that person in that case where they do feel that they're doing everything that the word, they may have missed the mark because they know they're not perfect. They have missed the mark, but they have learned from it. They grow from it and they are striving. What do what do we encourage that man or that woman of God that's in those particular shoes? What do we tell them to do when that unbeliever wants to remain married? They want to be with that spouse. Yes. Yes. How can we encourage them? Well, I, I was just want to say um, and encourage, you know, that man or that woman who may be in this case, uh, may find himself in, in this predicament uh, to hold on, hold on, keep Praying unto God because God hear your prayers. He hear your prayers. And 
a delayed a, a delayed blessing is not a denied blessing. And see the salvation of the Lord that will come up on your spouse. Believe by faith that what you're praying, and, and, you know, for your spouse to come to know the Lord. Believe by faith that he will or she will come to the knowledge of the truth and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Because like I, I, I told you earlier, said it earlier, we know some some people in some situations where the man or the woman wasn't saved, but their spouse was. And, um, you know, they, they hung in there and they prayed. They prayed that spouse through and that spouse came to know the Lord in the part of their sin. And I think it was one man of God, and I, I can't quite remember his name, or probably won't say his name, but um, I, I remember hearing the story, I don't know why I'm sharing this, but but I'm just just going to share it, where, where she was saved, he wasn't, and he ended up telling her not to go to church, and she went anyway, and he ended up, I think, locking her out of the home, and she slept on the porch that particular night. And when, she, when he got up and saw her still on the porch, after he had let his wife slept out, she slept out there all alone at night. She got up, went in there, and cooked him the best breakfast that he could ever eat. Was displaying godly character that love. He ate that breakfast, according to what I heard. And he turned around. Hey, she more He said, I want to know the God that you serve. Man. And she led him unto the Lord. Right then and there. And to add on to what he's saying, I, I thought it was so profound to bring out that point Amen. because I know Amen. a lot of people battle with this. Amen. Even until the testimony that he's saying, that woman of God stood in God's face long enough yes, to realize yes. she was fighting the spirit. Yes, yes. And she I looked, she right. looked past her husband yes. and she knew I'm fighting a spirit. Yes. And this spirit hates the God I serve. Yes. This spirit utterly hates yes. God. So God, my weapon that you teaching me yeah. that I need to walk in is a weapon called love. Yeah, I got to show it. him unconditional yes, love. Yes. And that is going to unlock yes. him out of the deception yes. into the kingdom of God. One key point, that's one strategy yes. that God is giving somebody today. Yes. He All said, right. my weapon is unconditional All love. Right. And yes. I will unlock yes. that man or that woman of God. Yes. Out of the kingdom of darkness. So he's counseling you. And he's telling you. Your weapon is love. Then another key point. That the man of God was actually poured into us is. We must learn. How to stand on God's word. In spite of. You may believe. 15 years. There's no change in that man. 15 years. There's no change in that woman. You don't know what God doing behind the scenes. Right. You don't know how the yes. seeds that you're sowing yes. in your household, yes. the way you live, the way you treat him, right. the way you treat her yes. is bearing yes. fruit. And you're going to see that manifestation one day. Yes. You don't know. Yes. But God knows. And if God is telling you, don't give up and hold on. I 100% guarantee, because we can bank on yes. God when he give us a word, yes. that God is working behind yes. the scene. He says, I am doing exceedingly yes. and abundantly more than you can even yes. ask or think. That is a word to encourage somebody yes. right now. Hallelujah. That's saying yes. things, no, yes, yes. it is changing. Yes. God yes. is doing something Hallelujah. to break yes. the power of hell yes. off of your marriage. So I just wanted to yes. uh, release some strategies. Yes, the good. Lord wanted that's to release good. some strategies to help counsel you yes. in your walk with the Lord. Yes. God is not a man that he shall lie. Then I'm going to tell you something else the man of God mentioned about. Guys, we can't be looking at Rashida and Terrence's marriage. That's right. You can't be looking at the pastor that's right. and the white marriage and your cousin.
in marriage, you go to a fair union, you, you see how he was holding um, um, cousin Nisi. And we're looking at all these other avenues. Instead of looking up to God and having a discussion yeah. with God and how he wants your marriage to be. Well, um, for her 40th birthday, her 50th birthday, her husband bought her a Mercedes Benz. Where mine's it? When am I coming? You see, Cousin Nisi got a, 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 a 4, 4K diamond ring. All this comparison, yeah. all of this competition. Yeah. And you don't know. You maybe don't know. Every time Cousin Nisi shows something on Facebook, she got a house room of flowers all on Facebook. Oh, next week, the husband and I bought this in the house. In your home, you may have peace. And you may not That's know that Nisi, Cousin Nisi, <laughs> husband, keep buying That's all it. these flowers. That's, That's his way of apologizing because he keep on stepping out on her. He keep on doing certain things. You don't know the details. That's right. So you can't be moved by what you see on social right. media. You can't be moved what you see in somebody else's household. Now, if a cousin Nisi, for an example, their marriage is truly blessed like that. You don't know the cause they have gone through. And now they're seeing the fruit of their labor. There's, there's nothing to get jealous or to hang on what your husband or your wife should be doing. That's something to kind of encourage you. Wow, we're going to get there one day. Wow, that's a blessing. Wow, I'm just so grateful. Maybe that's someone that can probably mentor you. Yes. Not someone you can pair to or use as a weapon to tear each other down. No woman wants to be compared to another woman. Man, that's a no-no. Right. No man wants right. to be compared right. to another man. If you're going to compare us to anybody, compare us to the Word. Amen. Yes. What does the Amen. Word say? Hallelujah. Um, if, um, if it is, it's also too, guys, it's about learning to study your spouse. That's good. That's I good. have to study Terrence. Yes. Yes. We've been together all these years. Terrence changed. He's been together me all these years. I have changed. Certain things I used to like, I don't like anymore. So, but if you can notice Sister Sally at the church and what she like, and you don't know what I like, and if I can notice what Bob at the church like or whoever in the family like, and you have not taken the time to study your spouse. So one of the other key points is learning to study your spouse because we change. Learn what they like. Learn what they do not like. Um, my husband is very spontaneous. Um, we could, one particular year for something we had going on, and he said, baby, pack your clothes. Um, I already got a sitter at the house. I'm taking you somewhere for the weekend. And in my mind, he know how I function. Wait a minute. Okay. We're going somewhere for the weekend. Who, he already said he had a sitter now. Who is the sitter? <laughs> Who's the sitter? Babe, I took care of that. You ain't going to put nobody over our children. Okay. Uh, we got enough money. Babe, I, he know I am a planner. So, Okay, just okay. Rashida, ease your mind. Everything's okay. Everything in order. And go and enjoy yourself. I had to learn. He is very spontaneous. And he had to learn before he plans something, make sure everything else is smooth at the house. Make sure the children are good. Because um, he, cause he already knows that I don't like last minute things. Make sure everything is. But there have some cases that I had to kind of get over myself and just flow with some things because sometimes stuff just happens. But I said that to make that point is that you have to learn your spouse. You have yes, to learn yes. when they're spontaneous. Yes. And let me keep thinking about this. And because he's spontaneous, he would do those spontaneous things with me. It's because that was his language. And he said, really? Why are you I want you to be spontaneous for me. So I, I began to get creative and come up with different ideals. Um, Cause he already knew I'm a planner in advance. So if I'm gonna do something spontaneous, 
I probably got three or four events already in my head for the year. I already got this tucked away. I got the children situated. I got this taken care of at the church. I already got it because that's, that's my natural flow. I'm a, I'm a ministrator. I'm a person of order. But I needed to work on being spontaneous. And I did because that's something he enjoyed. So I would just do, hey, we're not... Uh, Okay, we're going to do this today. Okay. And love it. Just open surprise and we'll just do different things. Go take a flight this way. Go plan to do this. Um, have a, a, um, a house gathering at the house. And, you know, you just begin to learn one another. So you want to make sure that you are studying your spouse, not wanting them to be a uh, like somebody else. Um, most of the time for anniversaries. My husband... Are for parties. My husband don't for, he don't particularly like want a party. Um, he prefer I just want to spend time with you. So I know to plan around just be us spending time together. That's what he enjoy. And then he know when times where I enjoy let's do something as a group, let's couple date. Or sometimes no, I just want me and you this time. So those things you have to just learn about your spouse. And don't try to mimic what you see on social media because you're not married Amen. to them. That's right. Don't mimic what you see in somebody else, That's but right. you can admire those things and take some ideals without um, tearing one another down. Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. With that said, and uh, I'm going to share this and I'm going to let my wife uh, share what she she had to share. Um, with that said, there's a, it's a book out there, you all. That's real good. And it's called the Five Love Languages. And it, it's a blessing. So if, if you can, married couples, get that book, Five Love Languages. I think it's by um, Chapman. I think it's his name, his last name, Chapman. Is it Gary? Um, Gary it may be Gary Chapman. Thank you, sweetie. Maybe, maybe. It may be Gary uh, Chapman, but it's called the Five Love Languages. And we have love languages. And it's an exercise at the end of that book. That uh, you and your spouse can do, and you'll find uh, you all will find out you all love language if you don't know uh, one another's love language. And it, it, the book is gonna help you. It's gonna help. You. Amen. Amen. So our second question. I hope that bless. I hope the Lord was counseling and ministering to us. Our second question is the last one for this segment is how do we deal with arguments and disagreement in marriages? You know how do we deal with that? Um, the number one thing and how to deal with an argument or as a disagreement, we all must learn how to communicate yes. effectively. Yes. Sometimes when we have an argument or a disagreement, we can make it worse because of how we, um, coming back and forth. Well, he doesn't like something I did or something I said, then I get this tone back with him, and we go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and to have come to a point where, where the Bible said, don't let the sun go down while you're angry, and we don't let the sun go down almost two weeks, almost three days, almost um, two months. And, and two, you know, uh, and I know you all can attest to this, Believe it or not, there's so many married couples because they have suppressed their anger. When something do happen with a spouse about something again, it could be something very minor. And when they finally talk about it, it'd be something that have happened eight years ago. And you're like, what in the world? What is you talking about? <laughs> because they have suppressed it so long. That's why, guys, to... Handle argument and disagreements. We must learn how to communicate. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I know this sounds so elementary, but a lot of us, and, and I can speak for myself in my marriage, I didn't know how to communicate. I thought every argument, my tone had to change. I thought every argument, my tone had to change. But no, the Lord began to teach me this is how you're going to resolve this. I'm going to take you to a scripture. Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A gentle answer, yes, Rashida, yes, yes. turns away wrath. Hallelujah. 
but a harsh word stirs up anger. So if I keep going harsh with my words with Terrence, only thing it up, it's like a demon in the room stirring up more and more anger. I mean, he, he having a ball. He just stirring it up, stirring it up. Because we need to catch the revelation that my respond back, even if both, even if it got into a heated argument and both going back and forth. Okay, now the argument has stopped. How you come back together? That's good. You can't come back together and you both back heated again. That's right. Even if one person is heated, the other person needs to get the revelation. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, I want to talk. Yes. You can already hear it in the tone. The anger is still there. I want to talk now. The anger is still there. But the other person needs to get the revelation. Yes. Say, hey, when you come back to talk, when you come back to communicate, I'm about to teach you how to do this. I want you to position yourself to communicate, not to defend yourself, Terrence, not to defend yourself, Rashida, but I want you this time to communicate to understand yes. why yes. this person got so yes. heated. I want you this time, even though they may be up to a 10, the other spouse up to a 10, I'm going to use myself, Rashida up to a 10, Terrence, Come to this table, and I want you to walk in Proverbs 15 and 1. I want you to have a gentle answer. Because if you respond with a gentle answer, my word can't lie. It's going to turn away that wrath right. in Rashida. Right. Let me tell you what wrath is. That's right. That's right. Rap is burning anger. Rage. Heat. Something hot or displeasure. So if you come with a gentle answer, I will turn down that wrath. I will turn away, said the word. I will turn away that wrath in Rashida. That means your gentle answer, a gentle answer means it's a soft answer. I'm not going to go in the same tone Rashida yes. going in. And sometimes it's harder for me to do that. I'm the man. You ain't going to say this. You ain't going to say that. But we got to come in alignment with the word. That's right. We got to, and I'm going to tell you too, wives, it's not good to constantly talk to your husband like he's nothing, like he's a kid, like he's a child. Uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And the we have to go back to observe ourselves with the word of God and let him put a flashlight to us and vice versa to men. It's not wise to talk to your wife as if she's a kid, as she's your property, as she's your... Ch no, that's, that's, that's Jesus' door. That's, 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 that's the Father in heaven door. That's what I meant to say. Um, Jesus, our elder brother, um, and vice versa. So we need to make sure we are handling God's blessing. Terrence is a blessing to me. I'm a blessing to him. And I know in the heat of the moment, that doesn't register in our head instantly because we, we're flowing out of our soulish realm. We're coming out of our flesh. But when it happens again, we have a disagreement. Here are some key points. Rashida, Terrence at 10, he said, your response, I need you to be gentle with him. And gentle means I want you to have a mild tone. I want your answer to be kind. Yes. I want your answer to be tender. I want you to give him a tender response and say, sweetie, I understand. I understand why you got upset with me. And what happened when he was here and I'm here, he came all the way That's down. Good. That's good. Because of I positioned myself to respond back to understand why he went here. Hallelujah. That's good. And I positioned myself instead of defending myself. No, this is why. I said what I said. Instead of taking that approach in the flesh, 
in the soulish realm, I reposition myself where I'm going to understand what, what, what is going on with him. And then I'm going to answer him with a gentle response. And sometimes, I'm going to tell you this, men and women of God, sometimes too, when we come to the table and we have a disagreement, sometimes when we come to that table, I want you to always come to seek to understand. So I'm coming to seek to understand stand something that hurt or offended Terrence. And I'm coming to understand, come on, come on. but also... Whatever he was feeling, he could be totally wrong or had been confused about what really take place. But I am going to at least let him explain his heart. Oh, okay. Well, I understand that, sweetie. That's how you felt. But to be honest, I'm still gentle. But that ain't what I meant. I didn't mean that like that can you um can you listen for a moment i just want to explain to you really from my heart this is how i meant this i just believe the and we can say the enemy just got involved and just twisted my words or made you think something that you didn't you know that really happened so sometimes that person could be because one scripture says be angry but sin not you know, we, we got emotions. We're going to get angry. We're going to get angry. But he said, don't sin in your anger. Don't Amen. sin while you're angry. Come to the table to seek to understand. Hallelujah. Have a gentle tone. Have a gentle spirit. Yes. If you don't have that, go to prayer until the fire of the Holy Ghost get Proverbs 15 and 1 in you that you can come, come out of the room with the Lord and you can take the presence of the Lord at the table when you communicate with your spouse. Because it says a harsh word is doing that was stirring up more and more yeah. anger. Anything mm -hmm. you want to share on that? And praise the Lord. Um, yeah, because when I, when I, as my wife was going, I was thinking about and um, um, I, our spiritual father um, actually ministered a word one time, mishandling the things of God. And we have to be careful not to mishandle the things of God. And husband, our wives, our daughters of Zion. So we have to be careful and not mishandle them, you know, in any way. Yes. You know, verbally or any way, you know, physically anyway. Vice versa, as with the wives, you know, and, and their husbands. We have to be careful with that and don't mishandle them in any type of way. Amen. Amen. I just wanted to uh, reiterate on that and share that. Yes, because we can mishandle one another with our words. Amen. We could even embarrass one another, even around family members. Amen. You had a family gathering, just Amen. certain things you just don't say um, to make your, your spouse feel a certain way or to belittle them, make them feel dumb, make them feel stupid. Amen. You know, I have saw a couple just say some things in front of us and in front of their family members, like, what's wrong? Amen. You know, what, what is wrong? No judgmental right. towards them, because I can understand it's just their emotions. They're in their soulish yes. realm, uh, the works of the flesh. But repetitiously, just constantly doing and doing and doing it. And don't see that the hand of the enemy right. is constantly tearing you down. You're tearing one another down. So we have to be careful with our words in public and private. Amen. Amen. We have to be careful with that. Amen. I thought you wanted to say that. Well, okay. I did. Okay. And with that said, uh, uh, you know, like my wife said, because we have to be careful with that because, and we have to recognize the enemy tricks and his schemes, you know, because even in that, he'll be sitting back like this, just sitting back laughing at what's going on, what's taking place. Because remember, he come to steal, kill, and destroy. He want to destroy that marriage, you know, destroy that union, you know, want to take your witness, you know, 
you going all off with one another and different things of that sort, and especially if it's in front of somebody, you know, uh, you know, that'll <laughs> still your witness, okay? Now you be like, I thought, you know, they, you know, uh, men and women of God, they going at one another like the Hatfields and the McCombs, <laughs> you know, so we have to be careful, uh, uh, you know, with that. Uh, and no, we're not perfect. You know, we're going to have some, you know, disagreements and different things of that sort. But we have to be on guard and watch, you know, our tone, uh, you know, our conversation or how we communicate uh, with our spouse. And so that's very important. I just wanted to share that. Yes, because um, what he's saying, I have learned to show people grace because I want grace. I see a couple that's highly anointed of God. They have a dispute. They just had a dispute. Right, exactly. God going to get them through it. Right. So I don't... Um, Try to hold no because I'm uh, I'm in the kingdom too. I know how marriage could be, so um, so I don't think it's pur purposeful for other people to you know do that to uh, people. Show them grace, show them mercy, because uh, no marriage is perfect in the in the realm of the uh, the flesh flesh. Uh, no marriage is perfect, so I think we all need to just show one another. Grace yes, yes. Uh, in those cases. Amen. The other scripture is Proverbs 19 and 11. It says, A person wisdom gives patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. I'm going to read another version of Proverbs 19 and 11. A man's understanding makes him slow to anger. It is to That's his good. honor to forgive. And forget a wrong done to him. So Proverbs 19 and 11 is a word of um, is a word of wisdom for us. That Terrence and I have a disagreement. We go into our argument. The word tells us a man's understanding makes him slow to anger. Yes, yes. So if we will both come to the table, not so much of looking. I need you to hear That's my good. point and yes. get it. Come to the table yes. with the mindset to be a woman that's coming to understand what just happened and how that made Terrence feel. It'll cause me to be slow to anger. If I he come yes. to the table with an understanding of uh, to understand how that made me feel. It'll make him become slow to anger. Then the scripture said, it is to his honor to forgive and forget a wrong done to him. Another version said, insightful people restrain their anger. Their glory is to ignore and offend. So if I come to the table to gain insight, I'm not coming to the table to be judgmental, but I'm coming to gain insight why my spouse, why that upset me, why that upset him, why he got so angry that at 12 o'clock midnight, I was still on Facebook. I was still Googling through the phone. Or I did something um, to hurt or offend him. If I come to that to communicate with him, I should come. I would be slow to anger if I come with understanding to understand. Well, baby, I feel like um, every time you look at the phone, I'm trying to spend some time with you. You're on Facebook, and y'all, that's a real live question point in marriages. Some married couples they feel that the spouse is giving more time to social media than to them, and in some other marriages, that that's not even an issue for them. That's not an issue. So I say this, you cannot um, run your home the way somebody else That's run good. their home That's because good. your spouse is different from my spouse and vice versa. You study one another so you can run your house effectively where God can still get the glory and keep all division out of the home. Amen. So we want to make sure we come to the table with insight, to gain understanding and stop being so defensive. Right. So defensive. I think you want to say yeah, something. I, I wanted to say something on that. Um, and you mentioned about um, 
you know, about spending time, um, mm -hmm. you know, so much on social media or whatnot. Um, and like my wife said, we have to, we need to come to the table, you know, seeking to get understanding. And, and uh, you know, people run, you know, their homes differently. You know, like I said, what she said, what works for this marriage, you don't know, work over here for this marriage. But with that said, that's why that book I mentioned earlier, Five Love Languages, mm -hmm. is going to be a blessing, it's going to help. Because as she was ministering, you know, about that, you know, thought about that again. You may be on Facebook, you know, a period of time at the night or whatever. And for this couple or this marriage, that may not bother the husband because he's not one that want quality time. See, quality time is one of the, the, the uh, five love languages that, that was, that's in that book. Yes. That may not be his love language. So that don't bother him by the wife being on social media uh, or whatever, you know, at that time. But for the, the husband over here that his love language or one of his love languages is quality time. That will affect him because at the time where she's giving time to Facebook or whatever it is or, uh, or the computer or whatnot, he won his wife or vice versa, the wife won her husband to spend time with them instead of uh, on the computer or Facebook or whatever whatever the case may be. So that's that's key as well. And that's why I say that, that the book is going to be a blessing to, uh, you know, your married people. And finding out one another's love language. And as we find out one another's love language, serving our spouse in that love language. And little in return, you'll find out that you will get be getting your love language, you know, it's down back on you. Amen. So you come to the table to seek to understand and not so much to Amen. defend. Because the other part in that scripture tells us that, but a, let me see, but it is to one's glory to overlook and offend. Sometimes you get offended. That the wife, why, why are you still on social media? It's one o'clock in the morning. Why are you still on social media, wife? It's one o'clock in the morning. We need to be spending time together. Cut the social media out and you may get offended. Well, I don't say nothing when you on social media. I don't say nothing when, you know, so we're constantly going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Instead of coming to the table to seek to understand, okay, this bother this person. It's not a matter of control. Right, now, if it's right. control, now you know what control is. Right. We don't have to go into all those classes right. about control. So I'm not talking about control. Right. I'm talking about respecting one another. This is that person's time. They want to spend together because them people mm -hmm. on social media, they, uh, they ain't with you when you're going through issues of life. Your spouse right there, they ain't with you to help pay bills. I need to focus on my home, yes. on what God is building, and not let the enemy in to tear it down. So we got Amen. to be wise. So yes. only thing I'm yes. saying, be balanced. Yes. Yes. We got to learn to be balanced yes. in every area. Because, for example, um, talking on the phone or doing this and this and that, that doesn't bother me personally. That's just me personally. But it may bother Terrence. Well, this is time with me. Come on, watch this football game, and I'm on the phone. Because our language is different. Right. So that would that that particular thing would not bother me. But that would bother Terrence. Mm -hmm. And then for an example, I like um service. I like my husband to help me out in the house. If I'm doing the laundry, sweeping, doing all this other stuff in the house, he's on the phone talking. I am stressed out. Mm -hmm. Come on, help me because that's bothering me. But that takes time. Show each other grace. Yes. Don't, yes. don't embarrass the man. Don't embarrass the woman. And take your business to social media. Um, telling all that such and such do and da da this and that. That's not wisdom. That's not wisdom. Um, you, 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 you show that person grace and mercy. And you later on, you talk, you, you just, you have a discussion with them. Hey, I would like it better 
if you would kind of help out in this area or vice versa. Well, to God be the glory, my husband does that. He helps out, oh, to God be the glory in areas where I need help in my household. So that's a blessing. But I'm just, I'm just throwing out different ideals and different points where we could look at if you see that something that bothers your spouse, I want you to kind of reconsider that and try to make some adjustments to make your household run more better. Amen. So, uh, an offense, overlooked it, overlooked it without seeking revenge and harboring Hallelujah. resentment. Hallelujah. So, God wants us to begin to overlook offense. You may, I may have got offended with Terrence. He may have gotten offended with me. In some, y'all, some cases, some things, we don't have to point out all the stuff he do wrong, right. all the stuff I do wrong. Right. We don't have to do that. Overlook. Yes. And when I, when God is telling us to overlook, he's telling us to forgive it, yes. let it go, don't That's harbor it. It. the resentment. Yes. Don't bring up the next thing that That's Rashida wrong. do. Or Terrence, the next thing that Terrence do, and he come to me about something where I remember three months ago, you didn't, wait a minute, you didn't overlook that. You bring it back some three months ago. So we got to learn how to walk this out because that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants to destroy what God is building. Amen. The enemy don't want you to forgive. He wants Amen. you to hold. Say, well, I'm going to hold this memory right here because uh, uh, I'm going to need it because I know he's going to come with something that I didn't did, but I make sure I'm going to hold on to that. But God is telling us, overlook. Yes, yes. Don't let that resentment Hallelujah. and that bitterness yes. build up because that's not going to make yes. your um, marriage um, fruitful. That's right. Ephesians 4, 26. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are angry. Mm -hmm. Angry Anger, I'm sorry, can destroy families. Our relationships and even lives. Even suppressed and buried anger can do very destructive mm -hmm. things. So guys, if you even need counseling, seek counseling. Yes. Go to a marriage counsel counselor that could help you manage what you're going through. And also, if it's to a point where you need deliverance from the Lord, seek a minister of the Lord that function and flow in deliverance to get the anger or bitterness cast out yes, so you can be able to function in your marriage yes. effectively. Amen. If you get in a heated argument, these are some last points. It may be wise to take a break to collect your thoughts and to calm your emotions down. Another key point, think before you respond. Be intentional about your words. One thing I can truly boast in God about my husband is my husband is very, he unsaid some things before, but it's very rare, very rare. He's very intentional about his words. That he understands the scripture said there is life and death in the power of the tongue. So he become very intentional about his words when he is dealing with me, something that I have done, something that I didn't do right. He, he has learned to be very intentional to think before he responds. I'm going, let me tell you about him. He going to speak the truth to me. He going to speak the truth. He ain't going to sugarcoat it with me. He going to speak the truth. And then there were times sometimes I have told him, will you be my husband, not my apostle? <laughs> You're trying to be my apostle, Amen. but he is my apostle. And I have to understand sometimes you have to stand up in that particular mantle because he is dealing with a prophetess Amen. in the spirit realm. But I understand the mantle in him, but I submit to the God in him that's addressing the spirit that's trying to come up against what the Lord is saying. Amen. Amen. So you got to also see your spouse in the position yes. that the Lord called them in and respect and honor the right. God right. of right. that of that uh, position, not them, right. the Lord, and say, you know what? This is the Lord correcting me. This is the Lord dealing with me. So 
Think before you respond. Be yes. intentional about your words and speak the truth yes. in love. Last scripture, James 1, 19 through 20. My dear brothers and sisters, everyone should be quick to listen. That's good. Be quick That's good. to listen. Yes. Be a thoughtful listener in your marriage. Be quick to listen yes. to your spouse. Yes. Listen to their heart. Yes. Be on, slow to on, speak, Rashida, and on, slow on. to become what? Yes. Angry. He said, I want you to practice this. I need you to practice being slow to speak. I told you first, be what? Quick to listen. Your first thing you sit down and talk to your spouse, you got a dis disagreement. Uh, let's, let's just use finances. Your finances. There's a disagreement. Be quick to listen. Slow to speak. Mean, think before you respond. Be intentional about your words. And slow to become angry. Amen. That means be, be, be slow to let your emotions take over. Hallelujah. It says, why? Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Our soulish anger would not produce what God desired. In other words, that standard of behavior which he requires from us. There is a behavior that God requires from us when we are angry. Because he said, be angry, but sin not. So there is a standard that God requires from us even when we are angry. Because he said, I, I don't want you to sin. Think. Think before you respond. And if you speak, Rashida, if you speak, Terrence, I want you to speak the truth in love. Be intentional about your words. Anything you want to say before we end? Well, just wanted to um, to share uh, this and, and, and we're going to end. Um, husbands, talk to the priest of the home. You have a relationship with the Lord. And things may, I would say, be a ray or whatnot in your household. You can go in your prayer closet or wherever you pray and begin to pray and intercede um, for your spouse who may be upset at the time or whatnot. But you humble yourself and go and get in the face of God. And if you have wronged your, your spouse in any way, make it right with her. But you have uh, the power and authority to go in and set the atmosphere in your home with prayer and intercession, and the, the climate in your home, and love on that wife. Show her the agape. Allow the agape to flow through you to her. Because women go through things, go through a lot. We as in men of God, as in priests, and I'm talking, I'm, I'm receiving his first and foremost. I'm here, I'm a Lord helping all of us. But be sensitive to know when she need, may need just that gentle embrace or shoulder to lean on, to cry on. Won't be so quick as dust thou be in this. Just learn how to hear her heart. Her heart may be bleeding and she just want to pour out. So I encourage us as men of God to be sensitive to the spirit and know when and what our spouse need at the particular time. Amen. Amen. And to sum it up, um, I just want to speak to the women of God. You know, women of God, we carry a lot. We play many, many roles. Uh, we're not only wives, we are mothers. We're not uh, only mothers. We have to cook, we clean, we work jobs. Um, there's a lot of things that we go through 
And I know at the end of the day, it's almost like with us women, sometimes we're so tired. We don't have anything more to give. But I want to encourage you, women, that God would not give us too much that we cannot bear. Sure. And he would just not do that. So, women of God, I want to encourage you to continue to do what you do, but also learn also to release what's going on with you. Spend some time in prayer because God understands when nobody else understands. God understands your heart. He understands what you're going through. And pray that the Lord will open up your spouse. That your spouse will be that priest that you need. That that spouse will. Okay, he will allow me to just share my heart and just cry and just and just uh, share the issues that's going on with me. And men of God, I want to encourage you. If, if God leads you this way, and your wife does that, if God leads you, hold her and just pray for yes, her. That's it. Just yeah. pray for her. Yeah. Because that's what she needs. She yeah. needs that covering. Yeah. She needs to know when I go out to that world and uh, face tomorrow, mm -hmm. I have a priest that understands me. He gets mm -hmm. me. And also, women, I want you to also make it a habit that we encourage our men of God. That's good. They go through a lot daily. They um, sacrifice a lot for their families. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of un things that they're not recognized for on their jobs. Mm -hmm. They're not nobody recognized all the the things that they go through and what they do on the job. But it's good to come home and know my wife recognizes it. My wife uh, shows me. Sometimes I do for my husband, I have a just because day. Mm -hmm. Just because mm -hmm. you do what you do for us. Mm -hmm. He can come home, be surprised. And I know that it is not women, it's not um, traditional to send flowers to a man. But one year I did that. I sent it to him on his job. And that's not traditional versus you see that with men do that for their wives, but I'm, I'm just non-traditional. I do things that other people probably wouldn't do. They'll say that that's something you should have not done, but I'm just non-traditional. And I learned to go through, to move my life and, and move in the bank of my marriage in a way that will please God and that pleases my husband. Because that's who I need to please at the end of the day. Yeah. And when um, he got the flowers at work, what did your co-worker say? You, get, you told me something that they said. Man, what you do to deserve this? Oh, oh yeah, I think it was. Yeah, what do I do to deserve this? What, what do you do to deserve this? Yeah. So that was very non-traditional, but I felt that's something the Lord put on my heart to do for him, Amen. to show him that we appreciate Amen. you. We, your wife appreciates yes. you. And that's something all a man need. Most of what men need respect from their wife. They want to feel respect, respected. They want to feel appreciated. And they want us to build them up. So we just truly, truly pray that this um, 911 marriage counseling has truly been a blessing to you guys. It has been a blessing to us. We are forever forever in the school of the Holy Ghost. He's yes. constantly correcting us and helping us to be a better uh, wife, be a better husband, be yes. better parents to yes. our family. And yes. we are serious about making, um, making marriage a priority, not just yes. ministering to you guys, sure. but sure. also being that example of what a godly marriage is because we all know that Jesus is coming back for a church. He's coming back for a bride and our marriage anyway is supposed to be symbolic of our marriage to our bridegroom. That's how powerful marriage really is. That's how powerful. And maybe the next time that the Lord will have us to do 911 marriage counseling, we may take different topics and talk about um how to handle issues in blended families because we are very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And also 
when the fire go down in a marriage, how do you rekindle the marriage? How do you have to continue to date? Yes. Um, how you have to continue today to do the things you did to keep that fire going. We will share different things that we have done and continue to do to keep that fire going in marriage. So I just want to say to my husband publicly, uh, I love you. I, love you I thank God for you. You've been a blessing to this household. You have truly been a man of love. You've been a man of power. You are definitely is a man of prayer. And I don't, and you know my heart, I love keeping it real so I don't say stuff in front of Facebook or in front of the media uh, just to uh, just to be saying it. He has truly, truly has shown fruit of a godly man and a godly husband. So I'm honored to be called Mrs. Davis. I'm honored to be called Mrs. Davis. Amen. So that's a blessing. In all in itself, nobody but God joined us together for such a time as this. Amen. Amen. And I'm honored for you being Mrs. Davis. Amen. And uh, Facebook land, and especially uh, T Bach family and all who know us know I love myself so much, Sheila Davis. Amen. And she know I, know, I love so much, Sheila Davis. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He does. I love, <laughs> I love, I love Amen. Terrence. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Him. Uh, thank God for this powerful, wonderful woman of God. I mean, who lead. I mean, she, 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 she does so much, y'all. I mean, she does so much. I mean, here in this house and for our children and different things of that sort, and for others. And I just bless God for her being mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, guys, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. We just thank Amen. you guys for joining us for. Yes. Um, 911 Marriage Counseling with Terrence and Rashida. And until next time, we'll see you guys um, again for the Prayer Talk Show. We pray that this has truly been a blessing to you. And we just pray that the next time we meet uh, for the marriage, that we can go in a little bit deeper. But until then, please take those points about unequally yoked sections and also in how to communicate. When we're out, when we are angry, the next talk show will be December the 13th. I will have back on the show Evangelist Denise Fair, and we will continue our series with the singles. Also, I'm looking forward to end the series with the singles. Singles, I'm looking to bring two men of God on the show, and they're going to talk to the singles a life. A lifestyle and how to live single as being holy men. I think that session as well is going to be tremendous powerful. Um, we will be back in our building for the next service, which will be the first Sunday in December at 2 p.m. Central. So we hope to see you all back in the building at that time. And again, we love you guys. We're honored that the Lord called us and joined us as one. And we just lose blessings over you now. And we just speak and decree and declare that your marriages will be blessed. And can you end us in prayer? Father, the name that is above every name, Jesus in Christ. Daddy, we just thank you, oh God, even now. We thank you for what you have already spoken, oh God, oh God, to your people, oh God, on this day. And Father, we just ask even now that you that you that you will bless the marriages, oh God. Han rima babarokoshi, oh God. That han mama babarokoshi that have been receptive, oh God, of this message in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you now. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor in which is due, because it's due unto you in the mighty and the majestic name of Jesus. Touch that husband. Touch that wife, oh God. Han rima babarokoshi. Han rima babarokoshi. Help them to grow, O oh God, together in you, O oh God, in the Lord, in the name that is above every name, Jesus the Christ. And Daddy, we'll be careful to give our name the praise, the glory, and all the honor because it belongs yes, unto you in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. We yes, rebuke, O oh God, every assignment of the enemy over every assignment from hell, O oh God, yes, trying yes. to destroy, O oh God, marriages, O oh God, that you have put together, O oh God. We apply the blood, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ, against it now in the name that is above every name, Jesus the Christ. And we cover, O oh God, our marriages, O oh God, in the precious blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ. And Father, we thank you now. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor in which is due because it's due unto you in the mighty and majestic name of Jesus. Breathe on us, Abba. Breathe on our marriage, O oh God. 
and make our marriage and set our marriage on fire. Yes, God. Oh God, and set us on fire for you. In the mighty, the majestic name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And we consider it already done. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Abba. Hallelujah. We see y'all the next talk show, December the 13th. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah